Thank you, Anna, and it's a great pleasure for me to be here. I feel really, really honored to be able to talk to all of you. Um, when I talked to Jan about the exhibition and I came here to see it beforehand, before writing the text, um, it kind of, uh, even the words that you were using, just introducing the exhibition, and you mentioned conversation, you mentioned collaboration, these are the things that I'm very much interested in. Uh, not only from the feminist perspective, but also because I think we need more and more dialogue and conversation nowadays on all sorts of different levels. And uh, when I saw the works, first of all, I would never ever have thought that this was in a way a coincidence that you two collaborated on the project and then Ishtan kind of joined the party, <laughs> as Joanna said, because it kind of, uh, it, it's very natural how, how the works are displayed together. And I wondered whether maybe uh, Marie and Anya first, maybe you could, um, I know that this is the first project that you kind of started collaborating on, am I right in thinking that, how, it, how did you, because you work in completely different media, uh, how did it start, how did the conversation start? And I know that it continues because we've just seen the movie. It's not the, it's not the first time that we it's collaborated, <coughs> but um, we two share a studio together and um, this is since three years now, two and a half years. Yes. And um, then we had some curators visiting us, um, coming for seeing Anya's show, uh, Anya's work or coming to see my work. And um, then we had one and she was like, I have to show you both because in a way it makes so much se sense even though Anya is working with paintings and in, like, creating images in two-dimensional way and I'm more into spatial or three-dimensional um, ideas. And um, then we got invited to do the solo show as Anya and Marie, but in a connecting moment. And then we didn't want to show our work because we have seen it all the time together in the studio. And then we thought, okay, we work on a work together. We have just one week, but let's try it and leave all our individual work in the studio. And yes. then, yeah, it was like this. <laughs> exactly. Yes, it was that moment that our work actually really fit together. Also, it was not created at the same time, it was the same sort. So we meant to have a piece really created together on. And this was uh, a, a glass table, because we wanted to have this meeting zone already then, presenting our collaboration ideas. And yes, this uh, was one of the first things we made also for this exhibition you can find here in La Trangère. I mean, the fact that it's glass and it's a table and it's a tabletop, it, it kind of fascinates me and I'd like to go back to this, but then, um, Ishtvan, you, you saw the works when you came to meet Joanna, right? Or uh, you were invited to join, you were invited yes, to join the... Yes, I was the, very fortunate. How, when you, when you saw the works, because you very much work with materials, it's very... Um, you know, you can see in a way the hand there, but you also work with found materials similarly to, Anne yeah. to, to Marie and Anya. So, how, how did you feel about that? Did you feel like you were joining the conversation? I, I felt this immediate connection between our work. Do you usually work on your own or do you also collaborate? Uh, I work on my own. Mm -hmm. I prefer it that way, but uh, if I would come across with someone who would Mm -hmm. Who I could work with, I, I, I would be very much up for that. But you spent like three very intensive days in the gallery space, kind installing, of installing the work. So yeah. this was like part of the conversation and actually the effect that we. And I know that you kind of wanted, you were kind of discussing whether to put the works on the floor or hang them, or if you could maybe yeah. talk a little bit about that. Just at the very last, I mean, we were preparing my. Uh, to, ex to be exhibited on print, mm -hmm. but uh, very last minute the guys suggested me that no way this doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. It should yeah. be, it should be exhibited on the floor, and uh, I really like the idea because I didn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy about it. Yeah. That was also our idea when we saw Eastman's work that it would like really go together when they are like presented on the floor, like with ours too, like having the pure material shown, and that's like you can really feel it opens up and you can have a closer look also like that. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Even if even if we would put Eastman's work very close to ours or put it around or 
put this on, on his work, mm -hmm. it would still um, work together, we yes. think. That's why we wanted to leave the plins, leave everything that is more a traditional way of presenting a product rather than presenting energy, you know, and um, that's exactly. why we, we put it like this. And we could even have worked it out in a small room like the toilet cabin, I would say. Mm -hmm. it, it, um, this is, of course, a very nice room and the second one too. But for the two positions we are showing here together, it would definitely make sense also in a kettle, you know? Mm -hmm. Or in your pocket of your jacket. Yeah, and also that they, that they can cope so in this nearance without losing energy by themselves as an art piece, but like they are giving energy by this nearance, I think, or like we thought. <laughs> so there's a certain exchange in between the works and materials as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So going back to the idea of the tabletop, because um, when I saw it, and actually Georgia, who was here in the gallery then, uh, she said this is a tabletop and, and you work with uh, different domestic materials as well. And I know that there's toilet paper and um, some bits of fur. Um, why that kind of materials? It's a good, good question. We do not want to answer actually, <laughs> um, because we do not really know in the way we feel attracted by the anti-aesthetic of it. But also we we touch it every day. And why I say touch is because that's why we want to work with it. We want to work with materials that have been touched or touched by our eyes every day and are not visible anymore for us. Because when we use toilet paper, for example or whatever cleaning material, um, it is an extension of our everyday life and that's why we do not give any attention to it. But as a ma ma mass product, the toilet paper is already um, produced to be dead, to be or given away. And that's why we wanted to work with it, to really have this touching moment. Exactly. And it has <coughs> these two sides. It has this clean side and this used side at the same time. And also because glass is so pure, so clean, so perfect in a way, we have all these anti-materials taken to make to really work out these contrasts. And also these materials like toilet paper and all this also domestic cleaning stuff can be transformed in a way we want them to be transformed. And this is maybe also a way to underline also the fluid fluidity of glass somehow too, because glass is a really strange material in a way. Mm -hmm. It's not this uh, stiff and stuck as it seems to be. And I think, yeah, this is why we And toilet paper it. is wet and dry in our everyday use. So is the glass for us. It is, of course, we see it as a stable and solid material, but it is not it's, it, it, liquid in the end. And all the molecules are in, in, in uh, action. The, co the whole time, yes. I mean, it fascinates me that you use the word domesticity and this is something, because obviously tabletop is, is table, is where yeah. we usually have that kind of conversations at home. This is a place where you come into contact with others, you meet other people, uh, but also this is a very, you know, a place where you, you touch things and your works and similarly Ishtman's works, they are very tactile, very mm -hmm. haptic. Mm -hmm. very material um, and very intimate I think yes. very you know in your case there is this transparency fluidity of the different materials um, glass I don't know why always makes me think of skin mm -hmm. and the different boundaries mm -hmm. and the kind of exactly. contact points <coughs> and similarly in your case uh, you, you work very close with the material and I know that um, the, the works that are displayed here are very much kind of Built from different found objects, but you also manipulate the material mm. in a. In I a used found objects. Yeah. Yes. What kind of materials. objects have you have you used for these works? Uh, glass, brick, screws, mm -hmm. and uh, in the case of this particular grey uh, cylindrical shape, I used the uh, iron oxide from the Tisza River, mm -hmm. which is in Hungary. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of my friends gave it to me as a present, and uh, this this uh, piece is titled Impact. It's because of the surface was uh, created on the other side, with a physically punching the surface, as well as the iron oxide. It's coming from a river which was uh, poisoned in 2000. Uh, there was a um, 
there is a gold mine in Romania, and uh, the like the mud which was polluted by cyanide, which they used to extract the gold, mm -hmm. flooded into the rivers, so killed all the everything in the river. Mm -hmm. So that is the other reason it's called impact. Mm -hmm. And then would it because he, when you when I look at the different parts, say for example the one in the other one, which I hope you'll have a chance to have a look later, unless you've already done so, it very much looks like wood. So how do you manipulate it then? Uh, basically, it was uh, yeah. It, this particular piece as well was uh, created by that technique, and it's a very simple uh, physical uh, manipulation of the material, bending and and pressing. Mm -hmm. uh, the slab, and uh, I sprayed uh, oxides in it. Oxide mm -hmm. with uh, mixed with uh, dry glaze or ongo, it's called ongo, mm -hmm. to get this uh, dry surface. And it has a very much uh, natural surface look. Mm -hmm. And in your works, this idea of you know. This is very tactile, haptic, as I said, and it looks like things are smeared, and it's very like there is this contact between the skin and the material. Is this what actually happens when you work, when you collaborate on the pieces? It's beautiful that you say this with the skin issue because it's really what is important for us to to have this both sides, this transparency of the glass. But maybe you also saw that we are working with fur. Yes, I think that now it's not a piece here anymore because the experiment is not visible. But maybe you have the chance to see or put it in there. Yeah, yeah. And this is also our sort uh, of like the first representing this inside and outside of the skin, this touch, the position of being touched and cannot be touched, but like also that it can transmit something and the glass can transmit something by your view, like this tactile. Uh, um, watching, you can have like when you watch our glass, you can almost feel it, like with your eyes, what's going on in it. That's maybe what I can say to that. And there is this this figure of the Toto, which is present in the different works. Could you explain it a little bit more? Because yeah, when we um, exhibited one of the glass, which is not here, that was the very first one of the series. We called "Trick Me in Two Totos." Um, the, um, we just came back from a residency from, from Sweden and um, we found this wooden stand which is normally used in a printing um, studio where you put the um, the vials <laughs> um, with lots of paint on, I don't know the English word roller, roller. roller. yeah that's an easy English thing okay. and the roller on this wooden wooden um, wooden holder <laughs> um, and we were super fascinated by those holders because they um, were 40 years old and they had lots and lots and lots of layers of uh, printing paint on them just a super simple construction like you can see here but this is made out of steel we now create them ourselves but we brought those um, holders for the rollers um, <laughs> to Berlin and then we started on the series and we didn't want to present the glass on the wall and we didn't want to present it on the ground so there was this thing it was just a coincidence and um, then we placed it in and then we were super happy because um, it's such a fucking amazing symbol um, because it is like a hand or a figure holding holding it you know or ready to use yeah. always or like yeah. being presented in more than just one way like it's not fixed but still it's like a way a proper way of presenting it in a beautiful or yeah yeah gallery wise and, and people ask us all the time um, why is it called Toto but we don't have a clue it just came from from one day to the other we thought this is Toto this is a Toto Toto thing holding the glass and now we um, of course discovered our own invention of this word a bit more and um, I don't know if you know the story of With It of Oz where the Toto is the dog. The um, dog is a symbol for the in-between the dark um, Oz world, yeah. Unter Unterwelt, I don't know, the underworld and, mm. and then um, the reality. 
and we see um, those total forms, those stands, really as a transmit transmitter K figure somehow. Yeah. So it's, because also you have to know that total is like uh, popping up in the names of uh, the glass works we are having. Like so, it's a kind of um, giving all our works or like presenting them in the kind of spicy like zusammenfassen, gathering, connecting yeah. of our works together in this total family. So that's how it is a key figure again for us, like name-wise, world-wise, that it's uh, our re real world, the total and uh, underworld. Yeah. Does it make sense? <coughs> Maybe you have a question to it, because for us it's super normal, we just dig somewhere and bring up all those total weird things, but uh, in the end um, we have this talk to, to make things more clear and um, yeah, maybe if there's a question to the total thing, it would be good to talk about it now, maybe. <laughs> what came to my mind, which is also important, I think, to give it also this kind of presence, how things are presented, like total is mm -hmm. really in the focus of our work and our name giving, but still it's really not invisible, but it's uh, aside somehow, but it's still a key, and the key is something small also in the story, or you use it every day, like, and so the Toto has the same meaning for us, it's hidden somehow, but it's always the key, it's the key for the name giving, it's sometimes the key for how we present the work, and yeah, for all our ideas, the world around the cosmos we are creating, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, our work. It's also the name of a soft rock band from the 80s. Mm, yes. Which is, has to be referenced in this. Yeah, they are in Berlin right now. We discovered there it. There you go. Yeah. Immersion about the Toto band. Yeah. The Toto family is growing. Yeah. Yes. And it's also in this um, lottery thing in Germany. We, we have it here. It's called Lotto Toto. So yes. it's, a, it's about a game, but it's also about um, being um, addicted. And. Um, it's a really good name. It's a really like, it's a brilliant name. Yeah, and I think the number of associations is, is quite interesting in terms of how the meaning of the word might expand in different directions, really. But I have to ask, because you've mentioned Wizard of Oz, and that's one of my research interests, but a bigger research interest is Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. And just before the talk today, you mentioned that you actually had a file with Alice's uh, pictures. pictures yes. Can you just tell me a little bit more about it? Because now that's all I can literally focus on. <laughs> that there is this idea of Alice present there, and maybe the looking glass that I'm quite interested in. It's also for us like a subject going endlessly and forever, like when we came with this Toto, that it is also the dog uh, for Alice and the Wonderland, it really appeared to us that also this figure, like Mani pointed out and before, is having the, hold, is the holding hand, or like an animal holding the glassworks, like the dog is, and also we are working with fur a lot, and with this fur coats, and this skin issue, and uh, this Toto uh, animal is really for us, an important moment in um, the movie, going but, in but this, this other is another world. another story. The wizard of Alice Alice and 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 Alice I found footage, maybe? No, um, video stills ah, video from, stills. from Alice uh, Wonderland movies. It's really the moment where this female dollarish um, figure is close to a mirror. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not just the way um, many people have used this story as a reference to point out framings. It's also this... Um, very normal um, or very all day, uh, everyday um, situation of women reflecting each other, um, it's her, herself. Yeah. yeah. And of course, um, that's why we we also dig there because we see each other every day when we work together in the mirror and glass. But of course, it's so normal for us that we work with glass that we cannot see our reflection anymore. And there, um, in the um, um, surrealistic um, poetry, it is um, lots about this reflection, and that's why this Alice from in the Wonderland is, um, how I say, is a further step. It's it's a younger talk. We go over Alice from the Wonderland um, to the surrealism, where it's lots about this reflection, 
um, and that you cannot see yourself in your own eye. You cannot, you are not able to see your own reflection in the eye, but I can see my reflection in your eye. And um, that's, that's now a long story about it, but um, this Alice Wonderland topic is there and we have lots of image references when we talk to each other, but it's more the surrealistic um, mm -hmm. background we work with more strongly. So it would be much better if you talk about it because we have the feeling that you are the expert in this. No, when you mentioned Alice in Wonderland and you mentioned you know, glass and mirror, I, I'm interested in Alice. I guess my interest changed, kept changing since I, my mom first read the story mm -hmm. to me in Poland and it was a translation from English so I kind of had a different relationship with the text. But then I read it here when I was doing my PhD and then I reread it and I keep reading it and I think I'm becoming slightly insane and addicted <laughs> to Alice. But it's interesting that you mentioned surrealism because actually one of the things that interests me is this idea of how the self is being constructed mm -hmm. and it is very much linked to psychoanalysis and the yeah. idea of the mirror stage and this goes back to the unconscious and all the different tropes that are related to identity in surrealism. And um, I don't know if you have any stills from Salvador Dali, he made this Alice kind yeah. of movie. But this yes. is very much yeah. about, you know, this kind of reflecting and I always think that the reflecting, the reflective side of the mirror doesn't really belong to women because uh, we are always reflected almost in someone else's gaze, yes. usually the male gaze but also other gazes. Uh, and yet Alice goes through the mirror and to me she is this little fierceless explorer, very curious, trying things, growing, you know, extending her body, shrinking, playing with things, touching things. It's very, very much what you've done with the tabletops and adding different domestic elements because she escapes domesticity. She manipulates different materials and in this way she establishes a completely different uh, identity that, that is actually based on the contact with the different creatures mm -hmm. she has and she encounters in Wonderland or on the other side of the looking glass. I mean, um, there are probably no references to Alice in Ishtan's works, but Not as you far I know. do work <laughs> with glass. So why, why do you choose to work with glass? Because glass is a very interesting material. As you say, it's very malleable, it's very fluid, it's very tactile, it's very, to me, skin-like. Yeah. And also what you said with this unconsciousness, we were just talking about this today, like all this total world we are taking our ideas of is still unknown to us, it's like our both con unconsciousness and like because we are two having our mirrors on, inside ourselves, we can take out these ideas and put them on the glass works. It's really weird and that's why we were saying like it's crazy, it's uh, happening with us like somehow. Like we are not inventing but we are like creating something we can see because we can see it together. And yeah. I don't know if it makes sense somehow. It, it does because it's, it's through this exchange and collaboration and to quote Alice, you're a curioser and curioser so you keep exploring and going and kind of trying things. Mm -hmm. But that, that um, is a connection in fact. <laughs> because this is what I'm doing in my work, <laughs> the even though it's not necessarily connected to Alice in mm -hmm. one element, but it's very much similar. In what sense? In terms this? of uh, discovering the material, yeah. discovering this world. So in a way, you you when you, when you start working on on the piece, you don't have like a preconception. You just no. Get I mean, away. I have a vague idea, but that's very vague, mm -hmm. and the uh, process. Uh, during the process, through the process, the piece in the world uh, leads uh, to the final, final outcome. Which of the works presented here in the gallery was most unexpected in a way, in terms of you started with an idea and then, you know, things... The one happen. on the left hand side, for example, and, and the, the... one on the... the, and the yeah. window, yes, because that was a complete accident. Mm -hmm. uh, three, like a key on element and two other pieces melted together with the uh, brick. And yeah, that was not accepted at all, expected. <coughs> and then from from here I, I, I started to use this technique deliberately to mm -hmm. create, uh, well, more controlled pieces. 
But this was the first one that went the which kind one of, of the discovered. first, yes, yes. Is this something you still work with? I mean, in terms of the uh, technique? I would like to if I would have a studio, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid I, I still have to read. Well, I think now you're in this kind of transitory period, yeah. aren't you? Uh, yeah. Um, now, I mean, we could probably go back to Alice, but I think that would be unfair to everyone in the room. <laughs> no, but we could, we could for one thing, because the work you see here is for us quite old, because it's some months ago we have been working together. And, um, as you say, with Alice, she managed to go through the mirrors, she went, managed to go through the glass, she managed, managed to open the openings, you know, the yeah. holes or whatever, and it <coughs> continued. And we have this exp made this experience here too, that we added something on the surface of the glass. And we, of course, we liked it because it was this is a very joyful and playful co cooperation. Um, but we figured out something is kind of missing for us as artists in the research. That's why we now started to work actually with a glass in a factory. And we now work with glass blowers <coughs> who blow the glass for us and then have it flat again. Because we really wanted to go inside the material, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and as, as you say, it's for you, it's a liquid material, as it is for us. And when we entered the, the manufactory, in Bavaria, the first time we were completely amazed by the to see the material completely like a syrup or yeah something to drink or honey or yeah. there we were we finally reached you know this this first wonderland in a way and you know what I mean that's why I know I mean to me it's magic I mean um, my mother she she graduated with a fine art diploma and also glass. <coughs> So as a child, I remember, you know, watching glass being blown and this kind of liquid substance, very malleable. And to me, glass was always about transformation, yeah. used in one way or another. And that's why I guess probably when I saw the works, I thought this is very, very intimate, but also very magical in a way. As you say, you were taken to Wonderland. Yeah, and also as you were talking about Alice as a girl <coughs> going in this wonderland, which is kind of uncommon in this time, that the girl is like the hero of the story. We went in this uh, glass hütte and there was yeah. this archaic situation that it is only men creating yeah. this, uh, this glass works because it's such a hard, really body uh, exhausting work. And this is, was the other <coughs> um, yeah, side of this wonderland that it was so weird, like being in this. Uh, ancient uh, surrounding by this, yeah, which you cannot see in this clearness anymore. I think that's now it's more hidden, maybe this rolls, but they are still so obvious and so it was so confrontative for us two girls entering there and having this lots of yeah, sights uh, at the same time, yeah. At the end, this kind of work, all of you, there is, as I said, this intimacy and actually something that Joanna drew my attention to when we were talking about the glass and screens that nowadays um, and this is something that I notice mostly when working with the students the screen is mostly associated with the screen most of us have in the form of a, a, I don't know smartphone or iPad and it's very much um, uh, disallowing in the form of contact it's very dehumanizing and yet in this case the screen is different because it's very you touch it, you smile, you, you work with it. And it actually enables human contact. It enables collaboration, then it en enables further collaboration. It enables this kind of very human, very basic contact that I guess we all need. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if this this is something that you were thinking about when you were working on, on, on the works. What do you mean with en enables? It enables this kind of möglich, oder? Neben, macht es möglich eigentlich. That you like call each other or write messages. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But also at the other hand not, because it really separates you. Exactly. You're like lots of humans in the same room, but you're communicating with the mobile, asking Google Maps where is the way to the next door. But you could have asked your neighbor or like get in communication otherwise. Um, or like there are some studies about that people for an impression when they are like in Facebook or in Instagram, like uh, observing their friends' habits or like what, which party they were going to. Like it's not so, 
only positive, I think. Yeah. It's this both sides, and this is also, I think, for us an importance with our glass works, this both sides, the sharpness of the glass, the danger of it, but the beauty at, this, at the same time. We're very, very much aware of that. Yes. that but of course we have, we have this um, link in the work. And um, we, see, we see those technical devices more as extensions of our bodies. They really are grown together with us, and we have diff two different archives nowadays, where we hundreds of archives, whatever, um, we, we are physically connected with through this um, phones and, and technical devices. Um, and of course we touch, we touch them as someone we love or an animal we love or something we really want to, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, touch. We need to touch because we want the function of it. So that definitely is, is a linking, linking moment. And of course we make pictures with them and put them on Instagram. So it is not just this beauty and questioning moment with, the, with this reference. It's also something which is so normal nowadays. I, I wouldn't really question it anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also there's an interesting point of individualization. Having your own phone, maybe it's uh, smashed, like the device is smashed, or you're smearing your uh, your hand grease, do you say yeah. so, mm -hmm. <laughs> on the on the glass, and it's your phone. Like it's, it cannot be the phone of somebody else, which is also I think a really interesting mm -hmm. point. Yeah, as, as the prolonging of your body, you said. But I like your phone. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, do. I, do. I mean, I keep asking questions, but I just wonder whether maybe there is anything that you, you are interested in, because as I say, the works are absolutely fascinating and there are so many different reference points, um, whether anyone would like to... Well, listening to um, this conversation just now, I was thinking that the element that I, I pick up in the work is a further relationship, particularly in these two works, which is that I connect very much to a modernist sensibility, but also to a sense of uh, a sort of language of David Cronenberg, mm -hmm. which brings in a sort of nightmarish element into the work as well, which I'm really interested in. And I wondered if that idea of David Cronenberg as, as a part of the ingredients might have any connection to you guys or it has actually none whatsoever. Not on purpose. I think it's quite interesting you raise it because when I looked at the works, and it's not something I wanted to ask you about. Good. For me, it's very. It, is there maybe by like there is this moment by this uh, toilet paper when we having uh, it with the cell, sliver glue. There's but we like it. Like there's joy with it. There's not like we, we have acre for it or something. I don't know what's the word. Because Cronenberg is playing with disgust somehow, no? Also. Well, yeah, he's, and being distracted. He's absolutely, you know, there's a very strong dystopian language that you know connects. People like changing ballads, and I think there's elements of that in your work. To be honest, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, I see it, but it's, I, I think it's not something we we have with us when we talk about. No, no, I understand. Or, I, yeah. What I'm saying is, yeah. in my interpretation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. these are things yeah. that occurred to me, and I just thought, yeah. put it on the table. Yeah. <coughs> there have been there are other works where it's much stronger, where we use more latex and fetzen. I don't know what it's the word like. More like fragments, R ripped toilet paper, and it really hangs like a bit in a um, vampire situation, or yeah. But here with this, we haven't really spoken about it. Yeah, we didn't push it on purpose to yeah. have this. I but I think there is a real connection with mm -hmm. this kind of work in that yeah. if, if you're going to go into that dystopic sensibility, I think there's a real sense of connection. You know, thinking about something like the Atrocity exhibition by J.G. Ballard where these sort of internal organs, things that are really sort of internal and then suddenly can be externalised, you know, these are sort of connections that seem really clear to me. Can I, can I come in here? It's very interesting that you mentioned internal organs, because I actually wanted to ask Ishtan, do you have experience working in hospital? I do, yes. <laughs> so it must and have affected my work as well. And uh, I wonder whether there is any subconscious influence. I suppose I even accidentally nicked ideas from him because, you know, we see Handy Moore in a lot of places. 
or as you said, I, I used to work in a hospital, which must have affected the way I, how I see things. So it must have come into my work as well. I think this is interesting because when I look at it, I also thought about fluids, but I started thinking about the fact that you know the this is very you're playing with the idea of domesticity, skin touch, contact. To me, this is very feminine, but very powerful in terms of femininity. And you show those fluids. Your sculptures are very bodily, like as Yana is saying. So actually it makes me think more of Julia Kristeva's concept of the object and something that we, you know, we might maybe fear, we, we are not sure what to do about it, which is again close to Freud and then there are those ideas of the unconscious, uncanny. There is something very, you know, it's smart, you don't really know what it is. Is it rubber? Is it latex? What is it? Is it bodily fluid? Is it bodily kind of shape? Is it body that's like Alice's body, kind of something is mm. happening with this body? And I think uh, it's quite interesting that, you know, the different connotations that you can read into. But is this actually something you maybe considered? Those bodily fluids and kind of like quite female perspective on the body? All this kind of bodily shapes? I think it must be an accident in my case. I mean, not accident, but... <laughs> That's uh, the unconscious one. Obviously, word. I have... A, I think. I have def definitely. But not uh, consciously. Yes. Not consciously. Mm -hmm. Here, with this work in particular, um, it has 100% to do with it. Because Anya and I, we chewed the toilet paper. Mm -hmm. It's different here. There we just um, fold it and, um, and munched it around. Uh, but this, <laughs> <laughs> this one here, you can really see that it went through our mouth, mm -hmm. like kissing, like really, um, or eating and swallowing and, and bringing it back up. So this definitely has to do with it much more, especially with this framing here. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, we put the, um, the ink on it. To, to get the distance again, mm -hmm. to, to see it, not just as something that we have been kissed and eaten together and thrown out. Yeah. And also together, like with the body and the glass together, it's also for us a strong topic. We had this performance done in Brussels before, like in May, June or June. And there the glasses was presented by three performers moving around with the glass. They were not as big as them, but like one meter in uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, also that's why we had this video done, like parts of our body are visible and like moving around the glass, the hands caressing the glass uh, on the top and under it and meeting each other and like the context of the meeting, so the collaboration is like for us really strong also to be shown uh, in the public and in a public moment, not only hidden or like not hidden, but not only frozen in the process on the glass, but also together with bodies moving with them, moving around them, and it's definitely a thing we want to go more intense also in the future. And work with that. That's also because of the total. Again, uh, it's a representative of not having the glass stiff and fixed. <coughs> it's always uh, fluid and can be moved and taken. But I would say, to answer this question from another side, um, why we came up with, with a video, which would be nice to maybe show later on, um, it's not long, so it will be not too stressful for you, but we, sh we show in the video, we show bathrooms, and uh, weird bathrooms, like, or not, yeah, special bathrooms, let's say it like this, <laughs> where, there are, where there is lots of fur on the ground or on some framing situations and in the bathroom you get naked or you, you, you take off your clothes and you have lots of body fluids mm -hmm. however and drops of your pee go on the ground and in this specific case it goes on the carpet or in the fur and it really makes a new um, biotope situation in the micro you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's why um, we see those glasses, of course, very much linked to body fluids, even though we just used here our own liquid, uh, our own sliver, and not for the rest. But um, we see them really in those wet, dry 
yeah, toilet situations, maybe bathroom situations, um, where the body fluid is a big topic, and yeah. where it's um, it's the most intimate room in the flat. I kind of realise that the tabletops aren't really broken; they're sort of kept whole, and everything seemed like an adornment or like an adding additional sort of care and something to do with sort of the tissue paper, like trying to soften the edges somehow, there, and sort of the glues that are stuck in, it's sort of um, just as much about cushioning mm -hmm. something as, as sticking it on. And then I just thought the, the piece at the back was quite strange because you seem to have arranged these pieces almost schematically, like an archive, like, that, like you were sort of, an archive is like protecting protecting certain things. So I was just wondering if there's this element of care. Yes, this was when uh, Marie was writing also. Exactly. It's exactly this. It's exactly, yeah. It's, no. it's wonderful, yeah. <laughs> but it's just, we were working with the co-writer together, she just mentioned it like you did. And okay. I think, we think it's so really beautiful. I thought about a wound as well, you know, when you could spit on it. Mm -hmm. you try to mm -hmm. Or you lick your wound so yeah, they heal yeah. more easy, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But all of this, again, you know, there is this bodily experience that you kind of mobilize in a different way. And again, I keep thinking about phenomenology and Marle Ponti and skin as a boundary that you really transgress. And actually where this becomes a lived experience, in your case as well, uh, this Istvan, I think, where, you know, it's a lived bodily experience. It's very intimate, very, you know, there is this element of touch, care those fluids and even when you talk about you know the bathrooms uh, and I really hope we can watch the movie this is where you have this ritual of cleansing the body mm -hmm. and also all the impurities are left this is where you start with the day and end the day mm -hmm. and yet your bathrooms look like very domestic livable spaces yes. this was really a habitable spaces. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a question about um, how they function in space in the space of the real world. With Ishtans, it's quite clear that the bodily presence, their existence in the room, the fact there's no separation between us and them. So that seems like they, they, they have a physical, you weave response to the kind of a physical way, which is quite clear cut. With yours, I think there's this sort of the strange tension for me, certainly between the space of painting and image and the space of it being, you know, yes, it can jab into your foot, it's, it's lying down like a sculpture, so it's, it's real, it's, it's about the materials. And, but it also, again, for me, sort of slips between image and reality, and like a pond or something, this one, and then this is, because it's set up like, like obviously you have your, your toto thing, which is <laughs> that sort of separation between a formal presentation of an artwork, but it's not, because it's, it's, it's quite hardcore in terms of it's very fixed here, it's very well and it's very manufactured, and, but also had bedroom CD, the, the sanding marks and everything. But yeah, this is for me like a kind of a landscape, a horizon or something that sort of drifts away into that. So can you talk a bit about whether you want to transport us to, to the, the realm of you know, depiction or, you know, obviously it's abstract, but we can sort of move into drift into that territory, or with this one, I start to see, you know, pond, landscape, shorelines. So what's happening with that? That That's a very interesting it? question. That's something I, um, I would say I experienced the first time collaborating with Anya, yeah. because I see myself more working as a, as a sculptor, more working with installations. Mm -hmm. I never ever thought I could use color mm -hmm. or make a field of color. Mm -hmm. I was like, this is not something because I could do. Sort of exactly, sorry. exactly. And Anya, she's a painter, so she talks about it all the oh. fucking time. You know? mm -hmm. So, I just to find out. Yeah, yes. So, we talk about that very actively mm. and fight a lot. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This uh, is like our co working manner, yeah, talking about where to move the stuff. And, and it's really it's nice that you cannot figure out if it's this side or that because that's exactly where it comes together. And that's something we concentrate on so much. Um, we do not want to use a category anymore. We do not, of course, we present it like a painting, but mm -hmm. in the end, pff, what the hell? We can put it in the, in the toilet room and, and use it as a lift for, for, the, for the toilet, which would be exactly the same in the end. It's mm -hmm. just the way of presentation, and we wanted to make it, to, 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 to connect it to the wall and to, to, be, to be able to see it. 
but for us it works really... Do you think on the audience it results in a kind of a sort of unsettling or slightly tense experience that, to not place it? And is that something you're interested in? Because I think because people get this idea of dystopia or, you know, detritus and the abject and secretions mm-hmm. and things that we quite often try and hide away, which you're kind of bringing out and celebrating in a sense. So. But I think in this way glass is really thankful because it's flat as it could be a canvas, mm. but in the same way it's not because it has this two sides, oh. like obviously because it's translucent, so we're having a, pla- uh, a plastic, no, a, sculpt- a sculpture, mm. uh, uh, at the same time as we are having a canvas, which makes it so mm. logic in the end can, that it can be presented like that, like this, a painting in between a sculpture, or like only a painting, like hanging on hooks, or maybe like a tabletop, like a sculpture. But I think it's not a matter of uh, decision that we have to decide this piece can only be a picture or can only be a sculpture. I think this is a playful thing with having this total family that this family, like persons can do, can set themselves in the room, like how they feel and how they have been sh- have to be shown in that room, which makes the atmosphere ready for them. Yeah. Is that maybe? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you see um, this as a critic point? That you cannot really... Um, See the system? Is it, is it a problem for you that you cannot really see the system? Oh, I don't it? see it as a problem. I see it as interesting and I wanted to know how you see it. Mm-hmm. Um, because it slips in between, as I said to me. And now I think that's a strength of it, but I just, in the way you presented it, it's just really playing with it. And particularly the stand. That's, you know, all the stands you could use and have all the different things you could have made. You have this quite you know, kind of force, it's quite aggressive mm-hmm. it actually. Mm-hmm. And again, it, for me, it kind of highlights the edges of the glass and the yeah. shards and it picks up on that. So that's the idea, because you haven't talked about as unsettling, you talk about it in terms of protection and care. And yet we look at it, and part, I'm sure for people, it's like slightly degraded and it's sort of like slightly unsettling, it's like a bit dirty and it's like, you know, it's playing with all those sort of quite, you know, physical responses that we all have in a very intuitive way. So. Um, but my other question was just about time as well, how you how you process your um, methods and decision making, and whether you start and then come back to it, or you. With many um, processes in each work, we have to wait because the liquids have to dry to turn the glass over because we are always working on the glasses from both sides. So <coughs> we invented a technique to kind of to be able to work with color, watercolor on the glass, which is not possible, because water um, builds drops. So we <coughs> we use the gall of the ox, which breaks the surface tension. Um, and we yeah we make those huge buckets of this emulsion to to develop to be able to to uh, yeah to be like that. <laughs> apply. Apply. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So there is a time mm. situation which annoys us, of course, because we want to see it from the other mm. side. Yeah, but I think it's really important with your work as well, the fact that you can actually see the time of punching it. You have a yeah, record yeah. of process, mm-hmm. and then you use these like really geological or kind of environmental factors in your work, and I find that really interesting as well. Just, just more comment than anything. And also with the oven, in the end, you never know what's coming up. Yeah, yeah exactly. Coming out.